So second development of tongue is very very important question. This tongue is also developed from the pharyngeal arch. Okay. So guys, how can you classify? How can you divide the tongue? So tongue is now We usually divide into anterior two third and posterior one third, right? So other divide pona poro. So if you know. First thing how to write in development of tongue is anterior two third of the tongue is developed from surface ectoderm. Okay, surface ectoderm gives rise to anterior two third of the tongue. Posterior one third of the tongue derives from endoderm. Guys, first thing I'm going to the end The first thing how to write in the development of tongue is these two. Okay, then apart from that, you mention this diagram here. So what is this diagram, guys? This is your pharyngeal arches. I explain. No, so this is your pharyngeal arches. How many pharyngeal arches we know? One, two. 3, 4 and 6. Correct? So, in the 6 pharyngeal arches, I want you guys to focus on the floor of the pharyngeal arch guys. Okay? This is the floor of the pharyngeal arch. In this floor of the pharyngeal arch, we have 3 bulges or 3 swellings. Okay? Namely, first one is, first two are similar. Okay? There are 2 lingual swellings guys. Okay? In the floor of the first pharyngeal arch, we are going to have 2 swellings. They are called as lingual swellings. So, in the end lingual swellings, irukku, and the third swelling we have is third one is tuberculum impar. Okay. So basically, the floor of the first pharyngeal arch has three swellings. Two are called lingual swellings, and the one is called tuberculum impar. These two, the lingual swelling and tuberculum impar, together forms the anterior two-third of the tongue. Okay. The lingual swelling as well as the tuberculum impar forms the anterior two-third of the tongue, guys. So this is the floor again. So this is the floor of the first pharyngeal arch only. Now I have drawn the floor of other pharyngeal arches also. So here I have drawn guys, second, third, fourth. Okay. The eminence is going to be formed all over the second, third, fourth pharyngeal arches. So in the black color, Kapirada, hypobrachial eminence guys. No doubt. So the name of this eminence is called hypobranchial eminence. This hypobranchial eminence covers second, third and fourth pharyngeal arch of the floors. Okay. So, idhila pating na the mesoderm of the mesoderm of third the the mesoderm of the hypobranchial eminence of third pharyngeal arch is going to give rise to posterior one third of the tongue. Nariya soldram marnda kavala pradinga. In the diagram varanchi in the one hypobranchial eminence pote three abdingra number around pani bdiyor varinga. Mesoderm posterior one third of the tongue n varinga. Okay. So, hypobranchial eminence of third pharyngeal floor give rise to posterior one third of the tongue and the fourth fourth one is give rise to posterior most part of the tongue and the epiglottis guys okay the posterior most part of the tongue and epiglottis is formed by the hypobranchial eminence of the mesoderm of the fourth pharyngeal floor okay so i hope in the development of tongue if they ask a question regarding development of tongue the first point is t these two things second point is this diagram third one is this diagram explaining the posterior one third of the tongue and the posterior most of the tongue and epiglottis and the last diagram i need you to need you to draw is nerve supply of the tongue so what is the nerve supply of the tongue guys the anterior two third is there posterior one third is there the anterior two third anterior two third the sensory nerve supply is from the lingual nerve Lingual nerve is a branch of mandibular nerve. Okay. Whereas the taste sensation from the anterior two third is by the cauda tympani nerve, seventh nerve, and the posterior one third is both the sensory as well as the taste sensation is carried by the glossopharyngeal nerve, guys. Any doubts here? So this is how you have to complete.